In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Align and Transform panels to make clean and neatly arranged legends. So to start off with, I'm going to come up to Window and get my Align panel, and also come up to Window and get my Transform panel. And I'm just going to expand these both so that I can see as many options as possible in both of them. And you can see in the Align panel, these are tools for making sure that objects are lined up either to their left side, their middle, or their right side, also to their top, vertical, center, or bottom. You can also use this panel to distribute objects so that you have the same amount of space between their tops, middles, or bottoms, and again also on the sides and vertical centers. And then finally you can use it to distribute objects so that you have the same amount of space between those objects. The transform panel is used for defining where objects are on your artboard, so you can actually set the position of objects based on reference points, either on the corners or in the center. And then you can also set the size of those objects based on a particular measurement. So if I wanted a rectangle to be exactly one inch by one inch, then I could draw a rectangle and then come over here and specify the width and height of that rectangle to be exactly one inch on each side. So let's get started here by making a legend for qualitative categories. And I'm going to come over here and get my rectangle tool and draw a rectangle. Let's say that we wanted the height of that rectangle, just for practice, to be exactly two-thirds of its width. So I'm going to come up here to View and Rulers and turn those rulers on and then set my units to inches so that these are units I'm a bit more familiar with. And I'm going to call the width 1 inch, and I'm going to call the height 0.66 inches. And now I have a rectangle with that proportion of 1 to 2 thirds. And then I can hold shift and use the corner anchor in order to change the size of that rectangle so that it's a reasonable size. Now I'm going to turn off my smart guides by hitting control U, just because they're not really useful for me at this point. And I'm going to press control C to copy that rectangle, and then control F to paste it in place. And so now I have a copy of that rectangle that I'm dragging off the top here, and I was holding shift just to keep everything lined up. And this is sort of a common theme when making legends, you just want to make sure that everything is lined up. Now it's not that big a deal since you have your align panel, because if I was to accidentally move these out of alignment with each other, I can just select both objects and come up and align them both to their tops and they would both jump up and be aligned not only to the top of each other but also with the top of my artboard. Now the reason for that is that I've had this align to property here set so that it's aligning to my artboard. I could choose just align to selection and then if I brought these down here and get them out of line and then align them back up it would only align to the selection and I think that's a bit more useful for our purposes so I'll keep it on that. You can also align by key object where you specify which one of those two objects you want to align to just by clicking on it after you've made your selection. So let's draw a third box here. I'm going to do control C to copy it and paste in place control F, drag it off and now I have three boxes. Now I can use my distribute tools to distribute them horizontally on their centers and, and that puts the same amount of space between each one leaving the positions of the two end pieces the same. Now I want to make these color swatches so they denote different categories so I'm going to select this one and make its fill sort of a red. We'll make this one a blue and this one a gray. And now I can add some labels. I'll get my text tool and type Republican. And I'm just going to copy that label and paste it over here. Republican, Democrat, and Independent. Now I want to align these labels with these color swatches, so I'm going to select them all and the first thing I'll do is make sure that their paragraph justification is aligned to the center. And then in order to align this label with the center of this swatch, I'm going to grab both of them together, click again on that swatch so it becomes a key object, and hit this horizontal align center option in the align panel. And that will move this label over so that it's aligned with the vertical center of that swatch. And I'll do the same thing for my other labels and swatches. And then I can move all of these up so that they're right next to those swatches together. So let's say that we wanted to make a different type of legend for sequential categories. I might do the same thing where I'm going to just draw a rectangle, and for this one I won't worry about the exact proportion of length to width. I am, however, going to make a few copies of this rectangle, and so I'm using Control c and Control f in order to copy and then paste in place for each one of those. 
And since I'm making a sequential legend, I think it's actually best that these color swatches be backed up right next to each other so you can see the relationship of the colors as they would be in the map with the areas right next to each other. So I'm going to select all of these objects and then select one of those objects as the key object. And now I can set the horizontal space between those objects to be zero inches. And when I hit this horizontal distribute space button, it will back all of those objects up right next to each other. Now you could have also used smart guides in order to sort of make these objects stick to each other when you move them over, but this distribute spacing tool is really handy and a fast way of doing that. And I'll select them all and make them sort of a base blue color here, kind of a dark blue. And then I'll come back to each one and make it slightly lighter for my blue gradient. Again, this is for a sequential color scheme. And then I can come up and take my text tool and write perhaps all. And then I'm using copy and control F to paste in place. And then maybe most. Some. And least. So there's our sequence. And then I can do the same thing by selecting those key objects of the swatches and align those labels to those key swatches. Move those up. And you could use this with a numerical sequential scheme as well, although you may want to have the largest number over to the right, so you'd want to reverse the color scheme. So lastly, let's talk about incorporating lines and point symbols into legends. Um, in a lot of GIS maps, you might see something like this, where you just have a straight line and then a label right next to it that might say something like road. And I'll make that just a little bit larger. Now the problem with this is that I bet that there aren't that many roads on your map that are these perfectly straight horizontal lines. And so what I like to do in my legends with line symbols is actually reproduce something that is the general shape of the type of features that I'm representing on my map. So for a road I might take this pen tool and draw something that's maybe a little bit curvy like that and call that a road. And it's, it's a slight difference, but it does give the sense that roads on my map might not just be these perfectly straight lines, but that they can have some curve to them. And you get to see an example of what that sort of curve might look like. Now, it's important for your swatches, just like with these area swatches, for your point and line swatches to be aligned with each other so that you have a clean legend presentation. So if I had maybe roads and rivers, I might copy this first example that I'd made, Control-C, and then Control-F to paste it right in place. And then I could come here and say river, and then select this sample here. I'll change the color, make it a blue. And then because this is sort of giving the impression that roads and rivers are exactly the same thing because they have the same shape in our legend, I might actually just edit that line swatch slightly so that we can see that rivers are a distinct type of thing from roads. And perhaps if we have tapered rivers on our map, I might actually come over and get the width tool and make that swatch in the legend tapered. We can include point symbols in a legend like this as well as long as our labels are all lined up with each other. So maybe if we have cities, we have cities that look like stars. I'll just draw a little star there. And our cities might be sort of an orange color. I probably want to center that point symbol on these line symbols that are above it. And so I'm going to select all of those symbols together and just hit center align. And that will make them all center aligned in the same place. And I can nudge it back over if I want them closer to my labels. And then I'll go and copy control C and then control F to paste in place my label once again. I can call that city. And it's a decent idea to use the singular in, in legend. If you say cities, then that implies that this symbol represents more than one thing, rather than just being a single city. And I also want to make sure that this label is center aligned with the symbol that it's representing. And one easy way to do that is to make this text box about as small as it can be while still preserving that text within it. And then you can select both the symbol and the label and center align vertical right there. And that will line those two up.